Bangkok is a city that I think is often misunderstood. Thailand's capital city can be an intimidating prospect for tourists. Many see it as just a busy, dirty stopover full of sleaze and scams. But for me, it's pretty easy to see where many of them go wrong. A few years back, I made a video about the 10 reasons why I love Bangkok. And it was aimed at people that fly into Thailand at the beginning of a trip, spend a couple of days in a tourist ghetto like the Koh San Road, and end up thinking that the whole of this city is just like that. When really, I think Bangkok is a place that has something to offer for just about everyone. So strap in and join me for a whole new list full of both all-time classics and real hidden gems. That is cool. In one of my favorite cities in the whole world. This is the 10 reasons why I still love Bangkok. Bangkok is a city of many sides, but many people just see a busy, polluted place with some of the worst traffic in the world. And you know what? They might be right. But Bangkok also has places like this. This is Bang Krachau, an area known as Bangkok's Green Lung, a place that, despite its location, makes city life feel very far away. This whole area is cut off by a bend in the Chow Phraya River, essentially making it a small island in the city. To get over to this hidden oasis, we headed to the equally hidden Klong Tui Pier, where you pay just 10 baht per person for a seat on a long tail boat, which only takes about five minutes to cross the water into a whole different world. What you'll notice when you get onto the island is that firstly, there's a distinct lack of any sort of high-rise buildings. I think they're actually banned here. And also, there's a real lack of any kind of motorized vehicles, but we're getting around by a different method. Yep, the best way to get around is by bike. And luckily, you can grab yourself a set of wheels right here from the pier, so it won't be long until you're out there exploring the very quiet streets. There are a lot of different cycle routes around the island. Some take you along very thin paths down endless narrow soys, whilst others follow much wider roads alongside the peaceful Klongs. But there are also plenty of other things to see here, from a famous floating market on weekends, to some very cool cafes where you can take a break from all that cycling. But the real highlight for me is the Sri Nakhon Park. With its own leafy cycle lanes and sights to see, this is the best example of the serene nature that Bangkra Chow has to offer. But as nice as it is to explore the greenery, so much to love about Bangkok can be found in the concrete jungle. This city is a cultural hub, with the Grand Palace being one of the most obvious stops on most tourist itineraries. But if you're looking for a spiritual stop that Lonely Planet won't mention, then look no further than right here. There are literally thousands of temples across Bangkok in all sorts of shapes and sizes. But this one is a little bit different from the rest. At first glance, Wat Parawat looks like just another small, if elaborately decorated temple. But about a decade ago, this place made headlines for its small golden statue of David Beckham, which also looked nothing like him. But seeing as that addition was so popular, they carried on making some other changes. Taking a walk around the outside of the temple, you'll see a variety of strange creatures decorating the walls. But when you look even closer, you start to see some much more recognizable faces as well. This is honestly like a giant game of Where's Wally or something, just spotting the different pop culture characters. You have to do several laps around it just to find all of the hidden ones. And it's safe to say, you won't find many other Batman temples in the whole of Thailand. The temple is actually still under construction, so chances are by the time you visit, there'll be even more faces to find. And now let's stick with the familiar as we pay a visit to what is undoubtedly one of Bangkok's greatest hits. I am standing outside the gate of Bangkok's Chinatown, which is not only a very historic area, but also one of the best spots in the city for street food. The streets around the Yarrawat Road make up one of the oldest Chinatowns on the planet and one of the oldest areas of Bangkok itself. Since the late 1800s, Chinese traders have made their mark around these busy streets, and to this day, it's retained plenty of old-school Bangkok charm. But this is an area that you'll want to come to with an empty stomach. Chinatown is a great place to grab a super cheap but delicious breakfast, but of course, this area really comes alive when the sun goes down. The Yarrawat Road is 1,500 meters long, and at night, it gets filled to the brim with both cars and hundreds of different food stalls. Battling through the crowds will reward you with endless options under the fluorescent lights, from noodles to snacks, from seafood to sweets. Just grab yourself a plastic chair and chow down. And after that, you can grab some drinks. 
This is also an area with plenty of hip cocktail bars and live music hidden inside the historic buildings. So Chinatown is a must-see for anybody visiting Bangkok. But believe it or not, there is actually another place a little further out of town that is far less known to Western tourists. And when it comes to spending a night eating and drinking, this spot is on a whole different planet. In Bangkok, you can find markets of all different kinds. You can find markets on land, markets on water, markets during the day and markets during the night. And my absolute favourite market used to be the Camp Flea Market, which was right next door to Chatu Jack. It was just a great place to grab some food, grab a drink and sit in some cool vintage surroundings. But unfortunately, that has been a victim of the pandemic and it's now completely closed down. So luckily, we have found a very good alternative that is actually 10 times better. The good news for fans of the biggest market in the world is that Chatuchak is still alive and well, even if many other markets in the city have either changed or disappeared completely. But about 30 minutes from the city centre is a place that feels like you've gone back in time. Part museum, part antiques fair, part vintage shopping destination and part nightlife hotspot. This is the Sri Garanda train night market open from Thursdays to Sundays from around 5pm until midnight. And whilst there's no actual train here, it's pretty much full of every other vintage vehicle that you can think of, as well as countless other relics of years gone by. In fact, many of the decorations here came from my old favourite spot at the Camp Flea Market. And yep, that iconic centrepiece made it here too. Unlike many of the tourist markets in Bangkok, this place is full of things that I actually want to buy. There's no elephant pants around these parts. You'll find lots of clothing stalls selling thrifted t-shirts. You can find old toy shops and vinyl records. But this is also just a great spot to chill with a beer and listen to live music. And to finish things off, there's a huge covered area right in the center full of delicious street food three long lanes of great options at great prices. This is genuinely one of the best places to eat in the whole of Bangkok. But once again, let's take things to another level. Climbing up to one of Bangkok's many rooftops is essential viewing. Especially if it's your first visit, you really need to get yourself above the ground and look down over that sprawling Blade Runner skyline. As you can imagine, there are a lot of different options for vantage points over the city, but there is one that towers above the rest. Since we were last in Bangkok, a brand new viewpoint has opened up at the King Power Mahanakon Tower, standing 314 meters above the city in a very unusual building with a very unusual viewing deck. The building itself is the tallest in the whole of Thailand, and it looks a bit like a game of Tetris gone wrong. There is different pricing for weekends and weekdays, so watch out for that. The very intense lift show first takes you to an indoor viewing area for all of you aircon lovers, but right up on the top floor is where the real views are. And this open air viewing deck is really hard to beat. But for the more daring tourist, this place gets even better. You can walk out onto the signature Skywalk experience, a glass walkway that looks right down onto the buildings and tiny streets below. This is definitely not for the faint of heart. But don't worry, there is a much more relaxing way to see the skyline too. For me, there is nothing better than enjoying a cocktail with these incredible views in the background. In my last Bangkok video, I showed you the famous sky bar at the top of Labua State Tower, which is an incredible viewpoint, but it's also incredibly expensive for drinks. And while this next spot I'm about to show you isn't exactly cheap, it does have several different rooftop bars with different price ranges, all in one building. On top of Central World, inside the Centara Grand Hotel is four different rooftop bars. The cheapest is Red Sky, which is a 360 degree lounge style bar with views through a glass screen. Further up the steps is a champagne bar, a chocolate bar and a restaurant. But right at the peak is the most impressive spot. The Blue Sky Bar only opened in 2022, but the views are absolutely breathtaking. And if you think of the overpriced drinks as having an entrance fee built in, the money you spend here doesn't even seem so bad. Another reason why I love Bangkok is the sheer variety of accommodation options. In fact, Bangkok lets you live in luxury for a fraction of Western prices. <laughs> 
right under the sky bars I just showed you is the Centara Grand, a five-star hotel complete with rooftop pool where a standard room will cost you around 5,500 baht. But when it comes to accommodation options, Bangkok caters to every budget. A hostel room on the Koh San Road can cost as little as 600 baht a night, whereas a service department complete with kitchen can cost you as little as 2,500 baht a night, including breakfast. I'd say that the vast majority of tourists will find themselves staying around the busy streets of the Sukhumvit Road, where most of the luxury hotels can be found. And on the surface, this area can often be dismissed as just a busy, congested tourist hub. But if you just head down one of the hundreds of soys leading off the main road, there is always something cool to be found. Whether it's street food stalls with delicious food at lunchtime, or entire districts that show you just how multicultural this city is. Right next to the red light district, there's Soy Arab where you can find some delicious Middle Eastern food. There's also a Korea town. You can even find some incredible hidden bars, like this Cuban themed place inside a telephone box on Soy 11, which is a lot of fun. But there's also a much bigger district not too far away. I am now standing on the rooftop of our hotel in Ekamai, which is a very cool, trendy neighborhood just off the Sukhumvit Road. And this area has a lot to offer. There's lots of cool hipster cafes and you'll even find Mark Wiens' Pad Krapau joint just by the station. But this area is also known as Bangkok's Little Japan. And you don't have to walk very far before you start to see why. You'll find a lot of delicious Japanese food and some great shopping. But the Japanese connection is clearest inside the Gateway Shopping Mall. This place is full to the brim with sushi restaurants, Japanese bakeries and it even has a Daiso shop. The hotels and residences in this area also tend to cater towards Japanese businessmen and tourists. You can especially see it down in the breakfast room where they have solo seating and Japanese TV playing in the background. And this is our room up on the fourth floor, which cost us £30 per night and it's surprisingly spacious for that price. But the real highlight of this room is in the bathroom where you'll find a genuine Japanese toilet. And honestly, if you've never tried one of those things, it'll change your life. Now, the markets are the best shopping experience in Bangkok, but I've got to give a shout out to the more modern shopping options as well. Bangkok malls can be really good fun. From the luxury air-conditioned giants of Siam and Sukhumvit, which often boast some eye-catching theming and events, to the old-school technology malls like MBK, where you can find anything from a new phone screen to some retro video games. Malls are also a great option for food. You can find some very cool restaurants in Sukhumvit, so if you want to be served by robots, you can find it. But the vast majority of malls also include a more humble food court. Even the upmarket designer places will have some affordable meals, so there is never an excuse to go hungry in this incredible city. But really, what makes me so excited to come back to Bangkok every single time is the variety. Bangkok is the biggest city in Southeast Asia, making it a travel and commercial hub for the entire region, which also means there's just always something going on. If you can't find something to do in Bangkok, then you're doing something wrong. If you're into the arts, you'll find a lot of different art galleries like Mokka, the modern art museum, which gives you a really unique insight into the world of Thai artists. During the eight months that we were in the country, Billie Eilish came to town. You could even watch the biggest rivalry in English football right from the stands of one of Bangkok's biggest stadiums. For a romantic date night, you can dine in an old ship at Asia Teak. And if you have kids, there's even a few different theme parks, including this incredible Disneyland knockoff. And next time, we rate every attraction at the incredible Dreamworld.